What's up YouTube? This is Demkeys back again with another Unity tutorial and this is going to be chapter 3 of the Make a 2D Platformer game series. In this chapter we are going to cover animation. Alright, chapter 2 was done in Unity 4 but since then Unity 5 has been released and so we will be doing chapter 3 in Unity 5. So if you don't have Unity 5, I suggest you download and install it. Alright, now I'm going to open this project in order to show you what happens when you open a Unity 4 project in Unity 5. This is called chapter 3 but for you it might probably say chapter 2. That's okay, I've just rename the folder. Click select folder, open the project, you'll get this warning basically stating that this project is from an older version of Unity and it needs to be upgraded in order to open it. So click upgrade. Next you'll get another warning saying that this project contains scripts or assemblies that use obsolete APIs. An example of this would be previously we were able to just type rigidbody2d.addForce. Now you cannot do that. You'll have to type get component rigidbody2d.addForce or you'll have to make an instance of the rigidbody2d class so that you can use it. So you Unity now has its own API update tool which is going to upgrade the script for us. So go ahead and click this. Alright, so our project has opened up and what we have here is basically level 1 that we had saved earlier. If you don't have it showing up on the screen then just double click on level 1 in the project panel and that's going to load level 1 for you. Alright, so the first thing we need to do is create a folder called animations in the project panel. Within that folder create another folder called player. And in that folder, create an animator controller. Call it player underscore anim underscore controller. Next, create three animations. Player underscore idle underscore anim. Player underscore walk underscore anim. Player underscore jump underscore anim. Next, select the player object in the scene and hit Control Shift A and add an animator component to the player. Next, you see where it says controller. Click and drag the player animator controller into this. Alright, before we proceed any further, you need to have the animator and the animation windows open. If you don't have them open, you can open them up by clicking window, animation, and window animator. I have my own layout set up, so I'm just going to load that. Alright, so this is our player's animator. We need to add three animations to this animator. That is jump idle and walk. What's happening here is three states have been created each holding its own animation and one of them has been automatically set as a default state meaning this state is going to run when the game is run but we don't need player jump to be the default state we need player idle to be the default state so right click on player idle select set as layer default state. Alright next we need to create our animations. Now because you have added these animations into this animator when you select player you'll be able to see the animations here. So select player underscore idle underscore anim and go to the folder where the player sprite sheet is located and expand the sprite sheet. Now since this is the idle animation so we just need these last two frames. So select both of these and click and drag them into the timeline. You'll notice that the two frames have been placed here and the record button has automatically been pressed so it is currently recording. Alright now let's just zoom in a little bit so we can see the player. Now when you play this animation it's really fast. So what you need to do is change the sample rate. Change it to say 2. So what happens here is when you change the sample rate the frames are automatically spread out along the timeline. If I change this to say 14 you can see their placement has changed on the timeline and also the animation is quite fast. If I reduce this to 10 you can see it's a little slower. 8 it's even more slower. So 2 would be perfect. Now that we are done with the idle animation, you can click on the record button again, stop recording. And next we need to create our walk animation. Select the first 6 frames of the sprite sheet. Click and drag and set the sample rate to 12. Click play. If you are satisfied with the speed, then go ahead. If you would like to set your own speed, then up to you. Next, jump. For jump, we, we need only one sprite. At least in our case, we need only one sprite. And set the sample rate to 1. Alright, so we know that these are states. We need to transition between these states in order to play each animation. So in order to transition we need to create the transition. Right click on player idle, click make transition. That creates this sort of line with an arrow. You can make the transition to any state. Make the transition to player underscore walk and then make a transition from player underscore walk to player underscore idle. We'll also need to make a transition from any state to player jump and from player jump to player idle. We make a transition from any state to player jump because we want the jump and animation to be played no matter whether the player idle is being played or player walk is being played. So rather than make a transition from player idle to player jump and player walk to player jump, we just make it from any state.
rotate to player jump and we also make a transition from player jump back to player idle all right now we have set up these transitions but in order for the transition to actually happen the conditions need to be met that is where parameters come in so we are going to create a float parameter call it speed and select the transition going from player idle to player walk and click plus it automatically adds the speed parameter over here because that's the only parameter that exists so far if speed is greater we can actually select less also if we want if speed is greater than 0.01 then go to the other transition here set if speed is less than 0.01 so what we are doing here is we are going to have a transition from player idle to player walk if the speed is more than 0.01 and that does make sense because if the player is idle and he starts moving his speed is going to increase and if he stops moving his speed is going to decrease now uh, before moving on to this transition let's see if this transition is working or not go to the player folder in animations and select player underscore idle and check loop time in the inspector. Do the same for player underscore walk. It's not required for player underscore jump. Next, we need to make some changes in our script. All right, we'll also be making changes to the jump code that we had written previously. Public float ground check radius. We have a ground check object and an is jumping boolean. Public layer mask what is ground set the value for ground check radius to 0.5 f erase these lines of code be very careful what you're erasing because if you erase the wrong stuff then the code might not work next create a fixed update method the main difference between update and fixed update is that update is called once every frame whereas fixed update is called many times per frame generally all your physics calculations and your movement calculations you're going to be doing them in fixed update to get the best results so first set is jumping to true then collider 2d and the square brackets basically mean that it's an array colliders equals physics 2d dot overlap circle all overlap circle all basically gets a list of all the colliders that fall within a circular area that is the reason why we created a ground check radius all right so the first parameter in overlap circle all is vector two point that's basically where the circle is going to be created so that has to be ground check object dot transform dot position then we need the radius which is ground check radius and then we need the layer mask we are basically checking for ground so we are going to set this value in the inspector next for int i equals zero i less than colliders dot length so the for loop is pretty much going to run for the length of the colliders array then i plus plus then here if colliders i dot game object is not equal to game object here the second game object is the game object that this script is actually attached to then is jumping is equal to false save the script and let's go back to unity and in the inspector select ground under what is ground now let's play the game and see if our jump code is working all right so as you can see it's working and there's no double jump either now you'll notice that the character seems a little floaty. The reason for that is that the gravity scale is just one. Let's set it to four. And because we are increasing the gravity, so we'll need to increase the force in jump as well as move. So let's set jump speed to 800 and move speed to 80. Now let's play the game and see if the speed is enough. All right, so move is fine. So is jump. We might need to zoom in a little bit, so reduce the camera size and shift it a little bit towards the left so that when you play the game, the character looks zoomed in. It's easier to see the animations this way. So now let's work on the transition. First, we need to create an animator, call it anim. It doesn't have to be public. Then create a rigid body 2D, call that rigid body 2D. And in the start function, type anim equals get component animator rigid body 2d keep in mind small r not big equals get component rigid body 2d here it has to be big r because we are accessing the class under float edge so and so type anim dot set float uh, we are typing set float because uh, our parameter in the animator is a float then the name of the parameter and what value we want to set to it the value that we want to set is contained within edge so we're going to type mathf.abs. This basically gives us the absolute value, meaning regardless whether it's a negative or a positive value, we are going to get a positive value. And as you know, the value of h can be negative or positive depending upon which key is being pressed. All right, so let's go back to Unity and see if it works. Before playing the game, let's just make sure that our transitions do not have exit times. 
and now let's play the game you can see the transition happening each time I switch directions if I remain idle and I move you'll see the transition happening from player idle to player walk now let's set up the transition for player jump for this we'll need to create a parameter called vSpeed and in this transition set the condition to vSpeed should be greater than 0 0.01 and to transition from player jump to player idle vSpeed should be less than 0 0.01 now in this case what we're going to do is we're going to get the rigid body's velocity on the y-axis so anim.setfloat vSpeed rigid body 2d make sure it's a small r dot velocity dot y then hit save and go back to unity now you'll notice this also has an exit time so uncheck that so that there's no exit time and do the same for this okay it's it's not required here here in the settings change the transition duration to zero that's only for this transition now play the game and as you can see the character is jumping let me maximize this so that you can see it better Alright, so we have set up the animation for our player. Now that you know how to set up animations and animators, you can create the animation for the enemy. There are only three sprites over here, so all you're going to need is a player walk or let's say enemy walk animation. And you can set that as the default animation. So it's going to play constantly. Also set it to loop, so yeah, it's going to play constantly. So this concludes chapter 3 of the Make a 2D Platformer game series. Alright, before ending the video, I would like to mention a YouTube channel called Cybertail Studios. Now, these people are working on a game project called Heart of Steel. They'll be posting dev updates and Unity tips and tricks videos on their channel. So, if you'd like to check them out, then there's a link mentioned up on the screen and in the description down below. I hope this tutorial was helpful. Do check out these other videos as well. The video on the top left teaches you about the input manager. The video on the top right teaches you how to create a parallax scrolling background. And in the bottom left, you have a link to the Make a 2D Platformer game series. I'm also accepting donations, so if you'd like to help me out, you can send your donations to my PayPal email address, which is mentioned up on the screen and in the description down below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Leave your comments below, and I'll see you guys next time.